Shabbat Shalom, everyone. So just trying to think of different ideas of what we can do with our setup here. To my, you know, bless y'all's heart. You guys have all, uh, you know, have dealt with the years of all my amateur generic type setup and everything. And, you know, and so try to, while we're on this few months of home sabbatical, <laughs> For all of us, figured, well, you know, try and make this look really nice as much as possible. All right, Chucky Booth, T. Lynn, David Jackson, how are you, my friend? David and Michelle Vance, Shalom. Shabbat Shalom to all of you. Give it a minute, let a couple, you know, a couple people jump on there. Man, I just, we got some awesome, I don't know, I feel like Yah is really moving on his people. I really do. With everything we shared last night and everything, um, hopefully everybody was able to tune into last night's Triple T and hear what, what we got going on and what we're, what we believe Yah has laid on our hearts. So excited about all that all right so we are let's see okay All right. So to, to, I think as a good message to really get this thing kicking off with, um, you know, with what Michelle and I talked about last night and Triple T and with what we're getting ready to embark on starting tomorrow um, as you know, for anybody on here doesn't know, starting tomorrow, we will be on here live every day for two to four hours from three to 7 p.m. every day, um, Mountain Standard Time. So that'll be um, two to 6 p.m. West Coast Time, uh, four to 8 p.m. Central Time and five to 9 p.m. East Coast Time and then wherever else you're at in the world. <laughs> That'll be the rest of it. Um, <clears throat> but um, the thing that we, it's going to be more than just getting into the word. I mean, everything's about us getting closer to Yah. Um, this opportunity that has really, truly been laid on in our lap uh, to, since we all have got to sit still and hunker down, basically, and, and be at home then what greater opportunity can we possibly have than to be able to put some real time in the word, real time in prayer, felt fellowship. And so SY7 feels that it is our responsibility and our duty to help make that happen for all of our brothers and sisters out there who follow this particular part of Yah's ministry, which is SY7. And of all the ministries that he has spread throughout the earth, this is what he has laid on our hearts and hope that it will cause a, a fire to spread in the body and more pastors and congregations and churches and stuff will do the same thing that they'll take these opportunities to um, really help the people in their congregations and the people around the world that follow their ministry to to really dive in and make the time to help the children of Yah grow closer to him. Amen. And um, to really learn and know repentance. So <clears throat> with that said, I believe very strongly that <laughs> if I've ever thought about it another way is none like today as I've titled this, Repent 
His kingdom is near, very near. You know, when, when we first heard this verse, this, this verse was, I think it's in Matthew or Mark. Um, this was spoken by one of the disciples and by Yeshua 2,000 years ago. Um, and so it's how much more so is the kingdom of heaven near us now? How much more so is it now? And so that's the thing that I want to do is I want to get into the word about what we need to do to have a much deeper understanding and awareness of how, what it is that we, where we have to be in our heart, where we have to be in our mind, where we have to be in our walk of a level of repentance that takes us beyond where we've ever been presently. Um, and the only way that we're going to do that is by us growing and taking the opportunity like this that Yehovah has laid before us to really fine tune, mold, shape, all the fancy little cliche descriptions to be a child of the Father more than ever before so that we can be used by the Father more than ever before. And like I talked about last night, so that the power and authority in Yah can be opened up upon us. You understand what I'm saying? It's it's like the thing that I've I've said so many times. How can we expect Yah to endow us with such authority, with power in His name, to be able to declare in the name of Yeshua, rise up and walk, um, see, hear, speak, um, be whole, be healed, all these things. To cast out demons, all this stuff. You know, and I'm going to touch on this, but you know, one of the scriptures, it talks about in the last days that the old men shall dream dreams, the young men shall have visions. And my manservants and my maidservants, I will pour out my spirit upon them. Right here, right now, Ms. Baha, we have that opportunity right now. We are in this, this pivotal change of the world right now. For anybody to think that the world has not changed, they've got blinders on. They don't want to see it. Because as I know everyone here can attest to it, none of us in our lives have ever seen the earth shut down like this. We never heard of anything like this except the great flood. And even though kingdoms and wars and all of these things that have happened around the world, the world together as a whole that I have ever found in history or anything else has never shut down like this. And it's not for us to take it lightly, but it's not for us to fear it either. What it is, is an opportunity for us to get so much deeper with Yah, so much closer. And I'm, Ms. Baha, you're going to hear me say these few different sentences a lot over the next few months. Um, you might as well go make a t-shirt and wear it. We need to get closer to Yah. We need to know Him better than we ever have or ever hope for. We need to discipline ourselves and we need to spend hours every single day in Him, in His Word. And there is no excuse why we can't. If you are hunkered down at home, if you have been sent home from work until further notice, if you have been put on furlough, you've been laid off, whatever the case may be, wherever you're at and you are home and you really can't go nowhere, then it is time for this level of repentance in our life such as we have never sought before. In whatever way that is for you where your walk is. Uh, it's not the same for all of us, but the one thing that is the same and the common denominator is we're not close enough to you as we should be. We can never get close enough to you. There is no limitation. There is no, oh, this is good. This is far enough. That's only for people who don't want the responsibility of truly 
walking in that relationship because a relationship with Yah, it's not a relaxing relationship. It's not a relationship that we get to go sit down and we just sit there and watch TV together and, and chit chat. And that's not the relationship. Never has been, never will be. This is a relationship that requires movement. This is a relationship that requires action, obedience to do at the risk of life and limb, whatever the case might be. This is a relationship of, of being next to the one who made everything possible for us to be breathing today and to even have the opportunity of salvation. Amen. So um, I, I've got, we all know that there's a truckload of scriptures throughout the Bible about repentance. And I grabbed some key ones that I thought would be imperative to what we're going to talk about today. So the first one I want to tackle on, because this is the one I've seen uh, spoken about the most. This is the one that I've seen people quoting uh, throughout social media and everything a lot. And it's 2 Chronicles chapter 7, verse 14. And, and you all already know what verse it is that I'm talking about. If my people who are called by my name will humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, then I will hear from heaven and will forgive their sins and heal their land. Now, the thing that strikes me, Mishpaha, is something slightly different. I don't think it's about the healing of our land now. I think we're past that. I think we're too far into these end times for Yah to heal our land like he was talking about in the scripture because like Anthony and I him and I were talking before he went on live with his message and we were talking about that verse and and we both agreed that what Yah was talking about in this particular text was directly towards the land of Israel um, and it's not that it couldn't apply to other nations um, many have. There are stories and, and stuff. The uh, movies, the movie uh, Faith Like Potatoes, uh, based off of a true story. Um, the man that was uh, the main character of that true story being um, the movie made of, he, he stood on that promise. He called a revival in Africa and with the people, the farmers and stuff on that promise. And so at that time, yes, it was, it, it did pertain to that. Now, as always, Mishpaha, when I make my own declarations of something, it's strictly my two cents worth. It's my opinion. I am not declaring it to be thus saith the Lord, and I'm not declaring it to be an absolute fact. From what I understand of scripture and end time prophecy, from what I understand of where we are today, and even with this huge thing that has happened to the whole world, I think we're past the point of I will heal your land because we're in the we're in the we are in the we're in the part of this this story this plan this path that is that is just shy of the finish line we are at the place now where it's not about seeking Yah to heal our lands and let's have a future of hope and peace but it's about you seeking Yah to heal us and to heal our walk with him so that we all finish that cross that finish line together and take as many with us as possible this is about the first part of that verse of if my people who are called by my name will humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways i will hear from heaven and i will forgive them and, and it's almost like it's it's one of those last moments you know you know you you, you go to different things um some places are about to close or something and you get warnings throughout the last hour um you know, the store closes in one hour or the store closes in 30 minutes or the store closes in 15 minutes. 
And it's almost like Yah's warning us. He's saying, my book's almost done. What I have laid out and put into writing and put forth to be completed and accomplished is almost finished. And I'm giving my last few warnings out before I shut things down. Before I bring things to a halt. Before I release you to a hardened heart and a reprobate mind because you keep playing with me. And so in this opportunity, I think that the way that Second Chronicles 714 applies to us is it's one of those one more one last opportunities. Now, is it the last opportunity for us to take that next step, that next journey to get closer to Yah, to be more of, of a worker for him, for us to do our job, to work Mishpaha, to be in the field? to reach the lost, to reach those in sin, to help our brothers and sisters who are, are maybe are weak in their faith or or like Scripture disguise, describes those who are weaker minded and they need people who are strong in their walk to to be a strong hand, to, to be an arm to put out to them so they can grab a hold of the very thing that Yeshua has done for us that we are supposed to do for others. Are we at that time that Yah is like, this is one of the last ones. I'm almost done. And I really believe we're there, Mishpaha. I'm not declaring this is the end of the world or nothing, but man, everything about it smells like it. The old cliche of it looks like a duck, it quacks like a duck, it must be a duck. Well, I'm going to tell you something. Everything happening looks and sounds like a duck. And that duck happens to be the end. That duck happens to be the, 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 the very things that are going to usher in the tribulation and usher in the return of Messiah. We already have all the things being fulfilled in prophecy. Mishpaha, when we look at Revelation or Matthew 24, uh, Mark 13, Luke 21, uh, Daniel, and, and, I mean, we can go on with all the different places. People will, oh, where is your God? Where I where, where is he? Still not here and all this stuff. We've already heard all the mockeries. We've heard all the people making fun. We hear of all the people claiming to be Jesus. You know, the one I just posted a couple days ago of all these rabbis in Israel that are apparently declaring this one person the Messiah. But yet he's not strong enough because the nations have not received him yet. So he needs power by the people to follow him. Kind of sounds like a line out of the X-Men or something. Um, you know, all of this. There's just way too many signs, Mishpaha. And we spend so much time trying to identify those signs and, and, and try to figure out the next move and the next, the next proverbial chess play. But there's only one play. There's only one move. And that is for us, and it's a twofold move. One, for us to get closer to Yah. Two, for us to help others to do the same. And it starts with repentance. Hazarah by Teshuvah, to return in repentance. Return in repentance. Where are you right now, Mishpaha? Have you slacked in your walk? Have you lost things in your life? Have you lost someone? Um, have you? Ha it, 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 is things going south? Whatever the case may be, are you in a place where you need to cry out to Yah in repentance and say, forgive me? That I have doubted you. Forgive me that I have lost my faith. Forgive me. Whatever it is, forgive me. And may I never be the same from this moment on, but may I be truly devoted and surrender to you because now more than ever, Mishpaha, it is time to stop playing around and to lock it down and to sink yourself into Yehovah like you have never done before. And it starts with repentance. Because his kingdom's not drawing near anymore, Mishpaha. It's here. It's right here waiting. And it is moments away from, from the father looking to his son and saying, it's time. It is but a, a blink, a moment. If a day is like a thousand years, a day unto Yah is like a thousand years unto us. How close are we to the end of that day? Are, I mean, are we in the literal proverbial 11th hour, so to speak? 
Is it 11.55? Are we five minutes to midnight? And before the, the cock crows three times, I mean, everything, Ms. Baha. So the next verse I want to get into is Proverbs. And I just want to touch on some of these scripture verses on where we need to be and, and how we need to see these scripture verses a little different. Not change what it says, but maybe look at it deeper, maybe receive it on a deeper level and a deeper understanding of realizing we really are out of time. We've always been running out of time, Ms. Baha, since Adam and Eve were kicked out of the garden, the time, the clock began to tick down from that moment to the time that Yah would restore everything back to the way it was. Like he said, you will know the end from the beginning. The beginning was perfect. Everything was, we, you know, man walked with Yah in the garden. And we await the day to return to that where we walk with him every day, completely sinless and perfect and immortal and incorruptible before him, spot without spot and blemish. Amen. So um, Proverbs 123. Turn at my rebuke. Surely I will pour out my spirit on you. I will make my words known to you. One of the things that is a pattern of scripture of what Yah says is before he talks about pouring out a spirit on us, I will make my words known to you. The first thing that has to happen is repentance. On a constant basis, Mishpaha, day in and day out, week after week, month after month, year after year, I have watched the same pattern throughout the body of Messiah. I'm always seeing the struggles that people go through. Addictions, cigarettes, porn, um, alcohol, drugs, whatever the case may be. And, and they're fighting and they're struggling to, to keep right with Yah. They're, 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 you know, but they're not quite willing to let go of that crutch that that thing that they use to to make them feel like they have some sense of control even though they have zero control miss baha it's time to get rid of all of that it's time to clean out your closet it's time to wipe your table down and it's time to quit allowing all this junk to be in your life it's time for no more excuses. It's time to stop saying, well, this or but that. And it's time to really knuckle down. And whatever it takes for you to do that, you need to do it through Yah's leading. Obviously not something bad or anything like that. But look, I have known people. I'm going to use my wife's mother as an example because I think that what she did is exactly where some people need what some people need to do. Her, my wife's mom uh, used to smoke. She smoked for a lot of years, and um, about 15 years ago, when we were in the first handful of years of our marriage, she decided to quit smoking cold turkey. And she told us how there were times when. She would be on the floor, curled up like a ball, crying and weeping because of the withdrawal she was going through from cigarettes and how bad she wanted it. And she was begging God to take it away. Miss Baha, sometimes we need to do that. That's just all there is to it. Sometimes you need to be on the ground, curled, curled up in a fetal position, weeping your eyes out, crying out to y'all, please take it away. We have to be willing to do that. It is, it is so much like the, the, the act of sitting in sackcloth and throwing dust on your head, weeping and crying out to Yah to deliver you, to take it away. And he did. Yah delivered her. And, and 
Sand, her mom, Sandy, has never smoked a cigarette since. It wasn't easy for her. She went through some really rough days, as many people do who quit cigarettes or, or drugs or whatever thing that may be such a hindrance in their life that they just go into a panic at the thought of letting go of that in their life. But Mishpaha, Yah is the deliverer of all things. And a part of what repentance, true repentance is, is understanding that to truly repent means to stop doing it. We have to remove that thing from our life. Because otherwise we're doing a lot of, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Repentance and I'm sorry are two different things. I'm sorry is to tell somebody, I'm sorry I did that to you, but it doesn't mean it won't happen again. How many times do we tell somebody sorry? How many times have I said something out of line or disrespectful to my wife and I told her sorry? And yet it happened again some other time. May not be the same thing, but we make those mistakes. And I apologize to her or she to me. But when it comes to Yah, I'm sorry is not enough. When it comes to Yah, Mishpaha, it is, it is a heart of repentance that we have to understand that this thing can no longer be. It has to stop in our life. It has to stop for us to truly have that relationship with Yah. It has to be removed. Are you a person of pride? Are you a person of, of oh, nobody's ever going to talk to me like that. And, and every time somebody says something, you make sure that they you let them know who you talking to kind of thing. I've seen people who try to be so godly, but they have that one area. It's like they will not allow anybody to speak to them. If they think it's disrespectful, they're going to put them in check. Well, you're going to be doing that a lot the rest of your life. Because there's always going to be somebody to talk stupid. Pride, ego, arrogance, physical things, objects, all this stuff. Your heart, the heart of a man is inherently evil. And now the abundance of the heart speaks the mouth. What is the abundance of your heart, Mishpaha? It's easy for you to know. Because what you think about and what you talk about more than anything else is the abundance of your heart. So if you claim to serve Yah, but your mind you, or you, your mouth speaks more about everything else, sports, work, perverted things, whatever the case may be, if what comes from your mouth on a regular basis is what you are more of than anything else. But if a humble, broken, and contrite heart and spirit is what dwells in you, then what comes from your mouth on a regular basis is going to be to promote Yah and to be in a constant place of repentance. Always ready and willing to say, Father, I am sorry, I have sinned against you. Forgive me, like David did when the prophet came to him and, re and told him, you are that one who took the baby lamb from the person when he took Bathsheba as his wife and killed her husband. But immediately he hid his face in repentance. That David didn't keep living in that sin. He didn't keep taking people's wives and killing their husbands and stuff like that. His repentance was sincere and he paid the price, but he, he changed. And everything of what this is, is about what we have to do. We have to change, Mishpaha. And a part of that goes along with how we perceive the word of Yah. There are many denominations and, 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 and people out there that try to declare that part of the word of Yah is obsolete and, and is done away with and stuff like that and don't even know the judgment that they bring on their own head. 
Because at no time did Yah ever give us authority to declare any part of his word done away with. He never said you got that, you have permission to, to make that declaration. Never. And yet said just the opposite, that not one jot or tittle shall ever go away from my father's word. Heaven and earth shall pass away, but my father's word shall never pass away. And yet people do it. And, and so we come to Proverbs 28, 9, that says, He who turns his ear away from the Torah, even his prayer is an abomination. Now, I'm not talking about believers, babies, who first come to believe in the word, Yeshua, and stuff like that. They don't know better. But I'm talking about to those who claim to be seasoned in the word, who claim to be walking in Yah for years on and, and these things, and yet they speak of someone who has no knowledge. They speak of ignorance and, and lack of knowledge of what the word really says because they listen to their pastor or, or because they listen to somebody else instead of reading what the word says. But yet Yah's own words... Right here, black and white. If you turn your ear from my Torah, your prayers are abomination unto me. This is a level of repentance that is missing greatly in the body that claims to be a Messiah. This is a level of repentance that is sorely needed. So that the body of Messiah can be strengthened, blessed, and given favor to even greater by Yah. How can we expect Yah to endow us and bless us to move mountains in his name if we're de declaring his word to be void and saying that we don't have to do this anymore, we don't have to do that, or to be so silly as to say, well, that was for the Jews, when there's nothing in Scripture that says that was for the Jews. This is the kind of repentance I'm talking about, Mishpahad. This is where we have got to be right now more than ever before. And over these few months that we are going to have to dig into the word day in and day out. And I hope and pray that you join me and us every day, me and my wife. And Tuesday, tentatively, everything goes well. James and Robert are going to get on here with Michelle and I. And we're going to we're going to. Do the Bible study together. Anthony and Angela are going to join us uh, hopefully sometime this week. Uh, Anthony still is able to go to work, so we'll we'll do that accordingly. But Mishpahad, this this is this is it. This is a time for us to to really dig into the Word together to to harness every special piece of this bloodline. And our life blood, put it that way, because it is the very essence of what helps us to understand how to serve him and to have a much more surrendered heart. I don't know how to put this into the kind of words, elegant words or anything. I'm not even going to try. Mishpaha, it, it's, it's so simple, cut and dry, but yet it is the toughest thing to do when we still don't completely let go of our flesh. And it's what it boils down to. It's letting go of you. It's getting over you and going, okay, I, 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 I'm all yours. 100%. I'm all yours. Genesis to Revelation. I'm all yours. I will serve you. I will obey you. I will walk in your ways. I will no longer play around. I will no longer flirt with sin in this way or that. I will no longer make excuses to do this or do that, knowing that you may be displeased or knowing that I'm, I'm, I'm pressing the line of sinning here. That we really become surrendered. And I'm not preaching nothing you don't already know. If you've been walking in Yah. For even a year or more. I'm not telling you something you haven't heard. But I'm telling you something that apparently we haven't all got into our head yet. It hasn't sunk in enough. Why? Because we're still battling the flesh. 
because we're still allowing the flesh to interfere with walking in the spirit. We have a moment or I'm not in the mood today. I don't care. I do what I want, blah, blah, blah. If we don't get to do that. Not ever, not today, not five minutes from now, not four or five minutes. We never get to tell y'all, I'm not in the mood right now. Not ever. Oh my gosh, y'all forbid. We never get to say, I'm not in the mood right now. I've had so many people I've heard over the years when talking about, and they're like, well, when I'm just not in a good mood, I'm not talking about God to nobody. And I'm asking flat out, why? Well, because I'm just not in the mood. I'm like, who cares about your mood? What if that person that you're going to talk to is the last person that gets the opportunity to share Yeshua with them because God's getting ready to take them home in a few minutes? Or they're going to they're gonna die, whatever the case may be. Maybe you're that last one to plant a seed or to water what has been planted, and you're going to be the one that's going to send them over the edge to repent. But you're not going to talk to them because you ain't in the mood. You woke up on the wrong side of the bed. Oh, so many I've actually seen witness them do that. And, I'm and, of course, I rebuked them and made them very mad at me, but we don't get to do that, Miss Baha. We don't get to say no. I don't care if you're in the worst mood in the world. We don't get to say no. <clears throat> what better way to put you in a good mood? <laughs> Amen. What better way to put you in a good mood than to help somebody else come to salvation? Right. Change your mood. <laughs> I don't know how many times when I've been in such a really bad mood. And there was one time, I can't remember where it was, but I'll never forget the feeling. I feel it even now. I believe that Yah tested me at that moment because I had a person come up to me and I was really struggling at that moment. I, I was having a moment in my life where I was like, Yah doesn't want me. What, I don't even know I'm doing this, this whatever. And no sooner than I'm going through this, somebody comes up and for something starts talking. And I, they asked me a question about God or something. And I knew at that very moment, that if I said no and pushed him away, I was going to be in trouble. But if I spoke to him and shared with him about Yah, then I would have done right. And I did. And I'm so glad I did because when it was over, that person wanted to know God. And I never felt more alive and was so glad that my flesh failed and lost at that moment. Mishpaha, all of this pertains to repentance. All of this comes from a place of repentance and surrender unto Yah, that no matter where we're at, no matter what mood we're in, no matter what's going on, that we are always ready to give a, an account, a, a defense of the faith, uh, in season and out of season, ready to help somebody else come to Yeshua. Or to help a brother or sister through holding them accountable, loving them, um, and exhorting them as we're to do with each other daily. Edifying each other, sharpening each other, all of these things, all of what we are called to do. You ask God if he was still there in your life and then he sent you that person? No, it was... I was at a point in my walk where I felt like Yah wasn't with me anymore. That so you felt like Yah wasn't with you, and then He sends you someone yeah. to witness to. Yeah. What a better way to send right. with you. Right. That's yeah. Awesome. And Perfect. my wife was just saying that you know because I felt like Yah wasn't with me anymore in that moment, and what better way for Yah to say I'm with you than to send you someone for you to share the word with, to witness to, and. Ms. Baha, I, I want to say things over and over and over again. The heaviness on my heart 
I don't know if I, I want to yell or weep. I don't know if I want to cry or laugh. I Time really is running out. And Yah has handed us an amazing opportunity to take advantage of the fact that things are shifting and changing. This pause in the middle of this shift in the world and of mankind and 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 what's coming next. Because like I said last night, when the dust settles, it's going to be time to take inventory of the damage. Nothing like this happens and doesn't have long-term damage left after afterwards. Tornado comes through a town and you come out of hiding and the sun is out and the sky is cleared and you see nothing but one big, huge, destructive mess all around you. That's exactly what we're going to see when this is done from the economy to all kinds of stuff, stuff we don't, maybe we haven't even thought of. But this world's going to be a mess. It's going to be a, a disaster because a proverbial tornado has gone around this planet and tore it up. And when the dust settles and we all get to come out of our shelters, so to speak, it's going to be time to pick up the pieces. There's going to be people looking for hope. There's going to be a lot of people in despair. Mishpaha today, 798 people today died in Italy today. My friend Ricardo, because right now in Italy, it's it's evening time. It's like uh, 8.30. I think there's six hours ahead of us right now. And my friend Ricardo uh, sent me a, a message today, and he said 798 people have died today in Italy. Italy is broken in so many ways. The people are they're being tore apart at the loss of so many loved ones. And Italians in Italy living there, they are so close. They're so like family. Even neighbors who don't know each other, they're so close to each other. And Mishpaha those people are going to need someone to bring them hope. America, Israel, China, South Korea, and everywhere else that it's hit. It's hit Nicaragua now. It's starting to hit you know, South America, all that stuff. It's, it's not done. We have not seen it peak in, on the earth yet as a whole. There's going to be a lot of sadness. A lot of brokenness. And Mishpaha, I'm going to tell you something. We fail in this opportunity and we're going to pay a horrible price. Because when this stuff clears up, people are going to be looking for hope. And wanting to know, what do we do now? Where do we go from here? Because my life it will never be the same. And we are the ones to rise up and be that voice, to be the light for them to see in the midst of this darkness that has come upon the earth. We are the ones who will be the voice crying out, prepare the way of the king. Amen. But Mishpaha, that's going to come through repentance. For us to be ready to take on that role, for us to be ready as shepherds, uh, as teachers and preachers and pastors and or or just you in your neighborhood to be the light to those who are who are broken hearted around you for us to do this it is time for us to repent like we never have before it's time for us to cry out to Yah and say please show me let there be nothing that will hinder you from using me mightily to help this world come to you after this day of mighty darkness that is upon it. Please, I don't want to fail. And that is the heart that we need to have. That is the desire, Mishpaha, that we need to have. Is that we want to be used by Yah through, through this 
and after this. We want to be those disciples that he will send out in his name and say, go and do this and be baptized in the Holy Spirit and receive these things. If it is that time for that to happen, if, it, if it's at that time for him to pour out his spirit upon all flesh in these last days, even more so, the Mishpaha for you to be, for me, you, and any one of us to be a part of those blessed, special ones that will be called to do these things. If we have any hope or desire to be used by him in that way, then we need to make sure that our heart is clean, that there are no more spots and no more blemishes, that our minds are purified in him and have constantly wearing the helmet of deliverance and salvation. That is what we need to focus on right now. This is our time to, to refine and purify ourselves and to make sure that all of our armor is solid with no niches or holes in it and, 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 and no soft spots. It's our time to rise up and, and be whole before Him like never before. Repentance, repentance, repentance is what is going to put us there. Willingness to fast, Mishpaha. You got nowhere to go. Man, this is a time to fast. I, do it for a day. Do it for three days. Do it for a week. Do it for a couple weeks. Whatever Yah puts on you to do, fast. And fast for two things, unless Yah says to do otherwise. Fast for two things, that Yah will make you more pure and clean and righteous before Him than ever before, and two, that He will use you to reach the broken of this world. Because isn't it always been that commission, Mishpaha? Even in the Tanakh, it says that I have come to heal the brokenhearted, to release those in their prisons. To help the blind see and the deaf hear and the lame walk. And didn't we give, didn't we receive the same commandment to do the same thing? To go and be the beautiful feet that bring hope and peace to all of those around us? And Ms. Baha, what an amazing opportunity that we have right now. It's not about going on a missionary trip to another country like so many have been. Ms. Baha, your missionary trip is right where you're at. It's right there in your neighborhood. You have got a missionary trip right there. But you've got to be ready for it. You have to be ready to take on that task. To go into the battlefield like that. You've got to be ready and that readiness will come by you being on your knees in prayer. Praying to Yehovah, forgive me for my sins. Forgive me if I have taken your word lightly. Forgive me if I have not walked in obedience to your commandments to honor you. Forgive me for breaking your Sabbath. Forgive me for this and forgive me for that. Forgive me for allowing this to stay in my life. Whatever it might be. Repentance. Hazarab by Teshuvah. Return to him in repentance. So that we can help those who don't even know him. To come to the same place of repentance. To have the same hope. To have the same joy. The same strength. The same deliverance. The same healing in their life as we have in ours. Also in Proverbs 28 verse 13. He who covers his sins will not prosper. But whoever confesses and forsakes them will have mercy. Wow. Jeremiah 29, 13, if you seek me, you will find me when you search with me, search for me with all of your heart. Let's go to uh, Lamentations. Limitations. Limitations. Always fun to find. Go 
Okay, I was on the right page. I don't know what I was thinking. All right, so Lamentations um, 3, 22 and 23. Through Yehovah's mercies we are not consumed, because his compassions fail not. They are new every morning. Great is your faithfulness. Ms. Bahad, there I ain't seeing any mercy among the brethren. I'm not seeing compassion. Nowhere near as much as I should be seeing. I'm seeing a lot of uh, judging, division, hatred, casting out. Get away from me. Stay away from me. I hate you. And this is among the brethren. His mercy is renewed every morning. And yet I don't see ours doing that. I don't see our mercy renewed every morning for each other and for anybody else. And yet this is a part of that repentance, Mishpaha. If we're going to repent and ask God to forgive us and trust him to do just that, then where is your mercy and forgiveness for those around you? Remember, the Lord's prayer, man, is powerful. Forgive me for my sins as I forgive those who sin against it, against me. Yeshua said we will be forgiven as we forgive others. Where is your level of forgiveness and where does it stand? Because as I've said before, I've seen so many people unfriend and block and cuss out and say hate, hateful things and tell people they're going to hell and that they're a worthless piece of junk and use other words for it, declaring to be a child of Yah, but yet talking to another child of Yah and saying, because you believe the earth is flat, or you believe the earth is round, and berating them and doing all these things. You're, Ms. Baha, that person is going to be forgiven the way that they have shown the same for others. And who are you to forgive? What do you need to forgive for? Yeah, people have done us wrong, Ms. Baha, but how many times have we done Yah wrong and he keeps forgiving us? How many times have we deserved death from Yah and he keeps forgiving us? Not only doesn't give us death, but doesn't even always punish us when we deserve it. He shows us that endless, endless renewed mercy every morning. And yet we're not showing it to each other. We're not giving that same mercy and forgiveness to each other. Mishpaha, we will never have true repentance if we cannot show the same to those who repent or to those who have error. Joel chapter 2. Joel 2, 12. Now, therefore, says Yehovah, turn to me with all your heart, with fasting, with weeping, and with mourning. How often do you do that? How often do we turn to Yah with weeping and actually are crying our eyes out for the loss of this world? And with mourning for those who are lost. Just like this morning, I saw the notification that Kenny Rogers passed away. I, I, th I told you. I'm sorry. Well, I'm going to get shot later. But um, Kenny Rogers, 81 years old, passed away. One of my favorite country singers because some of his songs I dedicated to my wife. <laughs> my wife's going to make me cry. You know. His song, Lady. Um, what's the name of the other one? What? You're going to make me cry, babe. You, know, uh, you Believe in Me. It's two of my favorite songs that I dedicated to my, life, to my wife. And, she believes in me. Uh, she believes in me, yeah. And, um, you know, I love those songs. And... Kenny Rogers I always heard was a believer. I don't know where he stands in his faith. I don't know who he was. But Miss Baha, he, he's gone now. There's no turning back. 
There's no chance to witness to him again. There's no chance to tell him about Yeshua. How many people have we missed that opportunity with, Ms. Baha? I'm scared to even know how many I've missed that opportunity with that I'll have to answer to Yah for when I stand before Yeshua. And he says, why didn't you tell this person or that person about me? You had that chance. I gave you that opportunity. Why didn't you do that? Why didn't you share me with them? I don't want to have that on my on my list any more than I already have. I don't want to have that in my book of works or lack thereof anymore. Do you? Do you want to miss that opportunity? I mean, Kenny Rogers, we only know because he was famous. How many people do you know in your life whose paths you've crossed, who've, who've passed away that was never announced to the world, but only Yeshua knew? And maybe a few people that knew that person that we had a per chance to repent or to witness to so that they could come to repentance. How many have passed away and we don't even know? Mishbaha, we need to be there for this world and take them out of this world and give them the hope of a real world, a world of eternity with Yehovah. A world that awaits them as it awaits us. We need to be there to do that. And repentance is all a part of it. All right. So I've got a few verses left. Matthew chapter 3. Matthew 3, 1 and 2, in those days John the Baptist came preaching the wilderness of, of, of Judea and saying, Repent, for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. That was 2,000 years ago. How much more of at hand is the kingdom of heaven now compared to then? Amen. How much more? How much more? Also, verse 8, therefore, bear fruits worthy of repentance. Bear fruits worthy of repentance. So true repentance means that you will begin to bear fruit in your life, Mishbaha. If you're not, then something's missing. Matthew four seventeen. from that time, Yeshua began to preach and say, repent for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. Um, Mark, Mark one fifteen, and saying, Yeshua talking, the time is fulfilled and the kingdom of Elohim is at hand. Repent and believe in the gospel. The entire Bible is the gospel. Acts. Acts chapter 3, verse 19. Repent, therefore, and be converted that your sins may be blotted out. I lost, where, the, where in the world did I go? <laughs> lost my verse. Wow, brain went sideways. So that times of refreshing may come from the presence of Yehovah. Are your sins blotted out? Are your sins blotted out? Do you know without with absolute certainty that your sins are blotted out? Because if they're not, one, make sure, two, so that this can be a time, Mishpaha, this time that we have on our hands, that we can have a time of refreshing from the presence, in the presence of Yehovah. 
a time of refreshing so that he can minister unto us and strengthen us like he did Elijah before Elijah was to take on that huge next thing when he went and he was fasting for days. Yah brought him to a place, fed him, ministered to him, strengthened him. He slept for hours. He got him ready for the big task that was coming up next. This is an opportunity for Yah to do that in our life too, Mishpaha. It's a time for him to refresh us, to replenish our strength, our will, our, our determination, our, our hope, our, our faith for him to get us ready. James chapter 4. James chapter 4, verse 7 through 10. Now listen carefully to what is said here. Therefore submit to Elohim, resist the devil, and he will flee from you. Draw near to Elohim, and he will draw near to you. Cleanse your hands, you sinners, and purify your hearts, you double-minded. Lament and mourn and weep. Let your laughter be turned to mourning and your joy to gloom. Humble yourselves in the sight of Yehovah, and he will lift you up. Mishpaha, do not, be, do not play the fool of thinking of being like the shepherds of, of Jeremiah, where it says, Today, tomorrow will be like today. Let us drink and be merry and be happy. This ain't that day, and this isn't one of those days, and this ain't that time, and this won't be one of those times. This is a time to turn our laughter into mourning, our weeping, and our joy to gloom. Because we are living in a world that's becoming darker and darker and more wicked and needs the children of Yehovah to rise up and be a light. To weep with them, but to show them where the joy will come from. To show them where the hope comes from. To show them where the laughter will come from. Amen. In the last verse of 2 Peter 3, 9. Yehovah is not slack concerning his promise, as some count slackness, but is long-suffering toward us, not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. So, Mishpaha, we need to make sure that that is where we are at. We need to come to that place and know that, one, Yah has not forsaken us nor forgotten us. Yah has not left us. He is not bailed on us. It's us. We're the ones that keep bailing. We're the ones that keep slacking. We're the ones that keep straying from the path and from the direction. Amen. Mishpahav, repent. Hazarab by Teshiva, return in repentance. Seek his face. Draw nigh unto him so that he will draw nigh unto you. Seek him and find him when you search for him with all of your heart. No more playing around. No more missing the opportunities that you have, that we have, to preach the word of Yehovah, to serve him, to be dedicated to him, to have that close, personal, intimate relationship with him. And to share that with others and show them that they can have the same thing. Let us not fail him in this. Let us rise up in this time as the true worshipers of the last days. Let us be that first level, that first group that rise up in a time of utter darkness. And as the world is quiet, quiet and silent right now, let us make sure the world, the world hears that quiet voice of Yehovah that is so powerful and so moving. Let us make sure that they hear the calling of our Adon and our Yeshua Messiah. Repent for the time and the hand, the hand of Yah is near and the kingdom of heaven is here now awaiting us to enter in. 
Let us be that right now, Miss Baha. Amen. Let us do it together. Let us rise up together. You're not alone in this, and you don't have to be alone. SY7 is here with you in the name of Yeshua, and there are others around the world with the same heart and the same drive, fire, and mentality to be the same. We have each other. We're here together. We can do this together in the name of Yeshua. For a three-court strand is not easily broken. We are it. We're the last line of defense, Mishpaha. We're the ones to rise up and reach the lost. One more time. Amen. I love you all, Mishpaha. I love you so much. But man, Yah loves you so much more. Shalom, shalom, Shabbat shalom.